Hello, Dr. Joe here. Now, vitamin B6, also known as pyridoxine, is a water-soluble vitamin. And we were taught that water-soluble vitamins should not really cause any toxicity because the excess amount you should pee out in your urine. But that's the theory. What is happening in the real world is totally different. In a minute, I'm going to be sharing with you two cases, okay, two cases of vitamin B6 toxicity. And those two cases are just a tip of the iceberg because there are thousands, thousands more cases of vitamin B6 toxicity. Now, I'm going to do that shortly. And after that, I'm going to expand more on the problem of vitamin B6 toxicity. But before we do, just a quick plug. The book you are seeing on your screen now is my book on managing high blood pressure with lifestyle approach. This is the second edition of this very book. Links to get a book right below this very video. Now let's jump right in. So the first case we're going to look at here is this one that was published in News GP with the title, I couldn't walk a GP's personal story of vitamin B6 toxicity. Let's um, scroll down to read about it. Um, it's a sad story. By the way, GP stands for General Practitioner, for those of you in the US, and is the equivalent of your primary care physician, PCP. So, uh, so this very patient here is a doctor herself, and her name is uh, Mary Buchanan, Dr. Mary Buchanan. She, according to her, started taking a daily dose of magnesium for four years, and uh, it offered pain relief she had long been searching for. So what's the issue? Well, it's the fact that she's been taking uh, this magnesium supplement for restless leg syndrome. And uh, in her case, it is a genetic problem. And uh, she was having cramps and paresthesia, which were getting really bad. Eventually becoming so severe, it was keeping her up at night. So what does she do? Well, she had a chat with a pharmacist who recommended magnesium tablet for her, for those symptoms, the restless leg syndrome, the cramps, the paresthesia, and uh, because they were getting really bad. And it worked. The cramps eased. Okay. And she thought, hooray, I found a cure for my problem. But little did she know that this was the beginning of a long and painful journey, which will ultimately result in vitamin B6 toxicity diagnosis. And uh, she said this, I noticed a slight reduction of strength in the upper leg muscles and in my glutes. Then there was a continuous slow deterioration of muscle strength. She went on to say, then I couldn't walk. I was getting to where, where about 100 meters was becoming a struggle. She also said that I used to go to the tennis and the footy. Footy is football. But I haven't done that now for the last year now. Because walking a distance and going up and down the stairs is just impossible. You can see how things are for this poor lady. The mystery illness eventually became so bad that Dr. Buchanan sought help consulting a neurologist and embarking on a radiology and pathology screening regime. After an anxious wait, she received her vitamin b6 toxicity and peripheral neuropathy diagnosis caused by the magnesium tablets she had now been taking for several years it was confirmed that i had muscle weakness in both legs in my glutes but there are no treatments and there is nothing else you can do but stop the tablets and wait and see so this is the first case let's move on to case number two so this is case number two it was published in the annals of rheumatology disease journal with a title, Pyridoxin Toxicity, courtesy of your local health food store. Now, let's scroll down. It says, we recently saw a patient who had been taking vitamin B supplements from a health food store for the past 10 years. She had developed a peripheral sensory neuropathy affecting her hands and feet. She has had systemic lupus uh, erythematosus, which is lupus, for 20 years, which was initially thought to be the cause of her neuropathy, although her lupus was in remission. However, when her vitamin supplements were reviewed, 
it was noted that they contained 50 times the recommended daily amount of pyritoxin. Okay, 50 times. Okay, note that please. Um, and here we go. She was advised to stop the vitamin B supplements. And in the following months, her neuropathy slowly resolved. Okay, slowly resolved. So um, I will just end this very case here. There's more to read about it. But, you know, this is the bit that is, that is important. Okay, so uh, there was a third case that I edited out of the video because I was time conscious. Uh, in that very case, they actually did blood levels of the vitamin B6. And these gentleman's levels came back as 259 nanomoles per liter whereas the upper limit should be 125 nanomoles per liter so as you can tell he was really overshooting this is a slow burning epidemic uh, and is worldwide especially in the west in australia alone in the first seven months of this very year they have found 2700 cases of vitamin b6 toxicity over there so that's Australia. You can imagine what's going on in the US and the UK. So it is a slow burning problem. Anyway, to put things into perspective, the first question should be how much vitamin B6 do we need per day? Okay, so here we go. It is 1.3 to 1.7 milligrams per day. That is all you need. As you can tell, it is not a lot, okay? 1.7 milligrams per day is not a lot, but we are overshooting. So, where are we getting the excess from? Let's look at the sources. The first one is big pharma medications. Some big pharma medications have vitamin B6 in them for good reason. Okay, for good reason. So, that's one source. Next source is supplements. Supplements, this is the biggest source where we're getting the excess amounts of b6 lots of supplements have got them what vitamins and other medications or supplements i should say have got b6 in them so be on the lookout for them next source is cereals i went to our local supermarket yesterday just to have a look lots of cereals have got b6 in them okay next weight loss shakes okay weight loss shakes yeah, lots of them have got vitamin B6 in them. Next source will be protein bars. There is proteinemia, okay, in the world at the moment. Protein, protein, protein. Uh, and all of that proteinemia has gone into the manufacture of protein bars for convenience. People who do workout, they finish their workout, they have protein bar, and it's got B6 in, in it. Now, next, energy drinks, okay? Energy drinks, this is another big source. How, I've got some, um, you know, two brands here. This one is Red Bull. This one here has got two milligrams of vitamin B6 per 100 ml. And this is 355 ml can. So that equates to about seven milligrams, okay? And you can easily consume two of this, or even three in a day. Uh, for those who are into energy drinks, here's another one, another brand. This one is the KX brand and it's got five milligrams of vitamin B6 per 250 mils. This is a liter bottle. If you finish this, you have given yourself 20 milligrams of vitamin B6. So you can see how it is easy to overshoot. Okay, very easy to overshoot. So, next source of vitamin B6 is the genuine source, which is food. Okay, food. We have plenty of vitamin B6 in our foods. And that is where you should be getting your vitamin B6. Uh, you can easily get your 1.7 milligrams of vitamin B6 per day from your food. Easy pixie. Okay? For a lot of the extras, not needed. So, what are the symptoms? Let's talk about the symptoms of vitamin B6 uh, toxicity. You've already seen some of them in the cases that I presented. Here we go. Tingling and numbness. Okay? Tingling and numbness. In the hands and feet. Next, pins and needles. You'll have them as well. In the hands and feet, usually. We, all of these constitute what we call paresthesia, which I mentioned earlier on. So, next, 
photosensitivity you get into the sun you become really sensitive to the sun so that is another symptom of vitamin b6 uh, toxicity dizziness and nausea those are two other symptoms now a lot of these symptoms overlap with other medical conditions by the way they are not exclusive to vitamin b6 uh, toxicity the next one and this is the, the one that is really important uh, because you can start off with all of this, but if you end up with this, then you are in trouble. The doctor that I talked about earlier in the very first case, she's got this problem, muscle weakness, okay? Once you end up with muscle weakness, then you know you are running into serious difficulty. Um, now, I, I just hope she gets better because uh, this is a late presentation when things have really progressed badly, terribly. So, um, yeah, so those are your symptoms. Now, let's talk about what you should do if you've got this problem. So, what should you do if you've got this problem or suspect you may be having this problem? Very easy, because the good news, by the way, is that if you catch it early, it is reversible, okay? It is reversible. So, what should you do? Well, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna check your supplements, okay? go into your supplement cabinet or cupboard and have a look rummage through and look at the nutritional label on the bottle of the supplement and if there is basis listed on it dump it okay dump it because you need to really stop it that is where we're getting the most extra basics that we don't need the supplements okay so that's the first thing next thing Check fortified foods when you go shopping. Just look at the nutritional uh, label and see if B6 is listed there. If it is, please, you either avoid eating that food or you cut down on it. The problem with food is we have to eat, okay? We have to eat. So if it is a food that you cannot do without, then you just need to be eating it sparingly. That's what you need to do. But obviously, if you can do without it, stop eating it, okay? So that's the second thing you need to do. Next thing is stop energy drinks, okay? All this Red Bull business, you don't really need them, okay? Um, you don't need energy drinks, you can do without them. So please, uh, if you are one of those people addicted to uh, energy drinks, please uh, change the habit, please, okay? And the next thing I said here is that you should stick to whole foods. That is where you should be getting your vitamin B6 from. You only need 1.7 milligrams per day. And you can get that easily from whole foods. So uh, that is what you should be eating, okay? Whole foods anyway. So you don't need all of the extras. So um, like I said before, the problem is reversible if you catch it early. But if like the doctor, uh, you develop muscle weakness, then it becomes really complicated. That becomes a 50-50 situation uh, because that means the motor fibers of the nerves have now become involved. If it's just the sensory fibers of the nerve, easily reversible. When motor fibers are involved, well, it becomes unpredictable. I really wish that lady well. I hope she gets better. So, Hopefully you got some value from this very video. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Please like the video and also please share this video with your friends, family and colleagues. Questions, comments down below. That's it for this very video. Until next time. Well, this is Dr. Joe signing out.